It was my first time in the whole of Africa. We got here and I got in the car and then I remember just seeing the trees and the trees were so different. They'd been used to a different climate and I just found it so magical. I just kept staring at the trees the whole time. I found it so magical. <laughs> I was absolutely spellbound. So magical. I just kept staring at the trees the whole time. I just kept staring at the trees the whole time. All of these trees and plants and weeds, they all work together. They even feed each other the roots. We can find a new path that's two different strands coming together. This initiative is started 2012 in Gregorian calendar. The youth who are students at college, universities, when they back to home at summertime, we started to clean our environment, to clean our residents. Few of them youth, including me, formed an association which is regularly working on environmental activity. We started to intervene some environmental activities. By focusing on the lake shore, the lakeside, and the mountains found in here in Awasa, the so-called Alamura and Mountain Tabor here in Awasa, uh, mostly we intervene there. He said it was like his own Eden, which was interesting because there's so much of Ethiopia mentioned in the Bible, which is interesting in itself. But I'm a Gami Mihono, not particularly Mihono, Yella Africa Dems. This lake is called Awasa, Ethiopia. We are doing cleaning this lake is for, for the last 15 years. So that's my daily routine or my daily experience. So I must clean the lake. That's what makes me happy. these rewilding projects are really what we need um, across the world industry has sort of ravaged a lot of, of these beautiful areas and by rewilding we can we can bring them back given a bit of a bit of time and a bit of encouragement nature does find a way and we can restore these ecosystems and so that kind of remind me of the mountain, the two different mountains that we saw, the one mm. where you know they planted the trees and the soil has been pulled together mm. by the strands of the, the, the trees, mm. right? And then and we saw one mountain that was like cracked, you know, no trees and like there were cracks in on the ground. Mm. So it just made me think of that because when you plant trees and mm. the strands the, the roots come together, they pull the soil together and Right? And when you get rid of the tree, mm. there's nothing holding it together. Right. And the soil just washes away. Mm. It just washes away so quickly. The country like Ethiopia and Africa in general suffering from climate change because of the carbon emissions and other climate factors which are emitted from developed countries. So that we are suffering right now especially our country, Ethiopia, is suffering a lot. We have a good land, waters in Africa, particularly in Ethiopia, but unable to cultivate properly because of the climate change. Somewhere in America, the gas emitted is affecting us. It is better to work together. Don't be foolish, especially those developed countries has to be considered such a situation. I know that they are working 
a lot they are trying a lot but it doesn't uh, balance it with the resource they exploited from the environment and contribute to the environment so let's together everybody so this plant is Himalayan balsam um, and it's something we try and remove from the river uh, before it sets seeds. So it's got these seeds here and they're actually explosive. So um, they can set the seeds sort of miles away. I'll see if I can get one to explode for you. There you go. <laughs> um, so they sort of have 800 seeds, I think, per plant um, and it destabilizes the river bank and it sort of overcrowds other sort of native plants that we have here, like meadow plants. So this is one we actually pull out. So we pull them out before they set flower. Pull them out like that. Crush them and that allows other plants to grow. That's one of the species we've been trying to tackle. Uh, I think originally it's from the Himalayas and the Victorians planted it for a garden plant, but it, it sort of got out and escaped onto the river bank. Life kind of changed when we went to Debrecina. Women banding together and creating communities. I saw these women who just had so much strength and it made me realize the inherent strength women have. It means that no matter where you go, you can have that strength no matter what. Like even if you're in the worst times, it's a lot easier when you're surrounded by people because I think we as humans were supposed to be, well as a humans, we're supposed to have friendships and we're supposed to have relationships and human, humanity needs humans and we need to stop isolating ourselves and cutting ourselves off. I feel like maybe people's mental health would be better if people were just communities and they helped each other. This is my neighbor, I helped them. It's just nature. Looking at this river now, I know that there is still a lot of work to be done. There's massive issues with UK rivers, particularly with um, sewage still entering our rivers. That is a huge issue that needs you know, HS2 levels of money to fix, um, huge levels of government input to fix. Um, so when I look at the River Don, I see a lot of work to be done, but I mean, I never saw it in the 1980s. I never saw what it was like at that time when it was sort of its peak of pollution. But from hearing stories from our trustees that saw it and worked in it, um, some of their stories, you know, and um, one of our trustees used to survey the river for fish and he remembers the time one stickleback appeared and he was elated, one tiny little fish. Trees and plants and weeds, they all work together. They even feed each other the roots. We can find a new path that's two different strands, like weaving, lots of different strands coming together. And also the, I'm thinking of the orthodox cross, like it's composed with loads of different strands, which make up the whole pattern because of the communities. It's just closely knit together.